Hey, my name is Matt Giordano, theyogimat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Today, we'll focus on Chaturanga Dandasana. This posture is used in a wide variety of styles in vinyasa, and chances are, if you're practicing yoga today, you're doing this posture between 30 and 50 times a practice. So it is super beneficial that we understand what is going on in our body when we're doing this repetitively. Let's look at the structure of Chaturanga. In Chaturanga, the elbows are bent, which is called flexion. The shoulder blades are moving or moved together, which is called a retraction of the scapula. These two actions, if you continue to allow gravity to win, you would bend your elbows all the way and retract your shoulder blades all the way and you would be on the ground. This would no longer be the posture chaturanga. It would just be your face down on the ground. So in order to stop your body from moving all the way onto the ground, you have to employ what I am calling a balancing action. You have to engage your triceps, meaning you have to try to straighten your elbow, and you have to engage your serratus anterior, which are the muscles that try to separate your shoulder blades or protract your scapula. So if you engage these muscles in opposition of what is happening, meaning the elbows are bending, the shoulder blades are coming together, but you are trying to straighten them and you are trying to move your shoulder blades apart, then you will be able to stop the posture in space wherever you'd like and feel stable and steady. Let's make it easier. If we look at a posture like Utkatasana, chair pose, everybody knows that the knees are bent in chair pose, but what is the action that stops you from falling on the ground? It's trying to straighten the knees. It's trying to extend at the knees, which is your quadricep muscles, even though we're saying the knees are bent. No different in chaturanga. The elbows are bent, the shoulder blades are coming together or they are together, and you're trying to oppose these actions. So here are the three muscle engagements to try to do in chaturanga in order to balance out what gravity is doing to you. The first action I recommend at the shoulders is external rotation of the arm bones. This is going to give stability at the glenohumeral humeral joint, what most of us refer to as the shoulder. Notice you look at the bicep, turn the biceps to face out, and that's called external rotation. When the biceps face in, this is internal rotation. Out, external rotation. Now the challenge is your hands in chaturanga are in front of you. So your arms are going to tend towards internal rotation. The tendency here will be not that the hands move in, but actually that the elbows go out. Again, you'll see when your elbows go out, the biceps turn in internal rotation. In Chaturanga, you'll do your best to externally rotate, which would wind up, since the hands are fixed on the ground, it would be that the elbows would come right up on top of the wrist. Action number two depression of your scapula. This will create stability in your scapulocostal joint where your shoulder blades are. The reason I recommend this is because in Chaturanga, most of us do what's called upward tilt. That means the scapula starts to climb over, over activating pectoral minor and causing potential collision of the bones in the front here. So if you focus on your shoulder blade coming down your back, that will help you to stop that action and will also just increase the stability of your shoulder girdle. Step three, once you have the depression of your scapula down your back and the external rotation of your arms, then it's the final action of protraction. That's when the shoulder blades move apart and around your torso. So even though you're again in retraction, you're in retraction of the scapula, you're gonna to try to move your shoulder blades around the back as if you're coming in for a hug. So your scapula try to move apart from one another. Your front of your chest actually narrows a little bit without dropping the head of the arm bone down the front of the body. If you can keep external rotation, depression, and protraction, 
you're going to find that your chaturanga becomes more stable and it'll, you'll actually find more ease in this posture even though you're employing more muscular action. Try integrating these three actions whenever you're doing chaturanga and see how it works for you. See if it builds strength and stability. If you're interested in learning more about the body and more techniques for your practice, visit theyogimat.com mentorship. The Mentorship Mastery Program is perfect for students and teachers looking to dive deeper into both their understanding and their wisdom of the practice. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to youtube.com slash theyogimat and I look forward to seeing you next time.